Coach in the Fight here, talking about the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And I want to bring out one point about the Feast of Unleavened Bread. In this video, we want to talk about how it is a sign. Um, there's individuals um, who are, I don't want to pick on nobody, but they're a little bit materialistic. And so you see them having a sign that they put between their eyes and on their hands and such, I uh, probably used it as the thumbnail for this video um, to show you what I'm talking about. But over here, we're going to look in the book of Exodus to see exactly what he was talking about when he was talking about this sign that is supposed to be on our hand and on our forehead. Turns out he's talking about the Feast of Unleavened Bread. We'll see down there in verse 9 of chapter 13 of the book of Exodus. But we're going to start up there in verse 6. It says, Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, and in the seventh day shall be a feast of the Lord. Now, back here in Moses' time, he was actually talking about bread that they were making out of wheat or barley or rye or something like that. But then in the Messiah's time, we start to understand that he was talking about spiritual bread. If you remember over there in the, in the, uh, the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke or John or one of those gospels, he was telling them that the leavening and the bread was actually referring to the church doctrine and how they had to avoid that church doctrine. So now what I've come to understand is when during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, we are being told to get away from church doctrine for one week. He says seven days that shall have a feast of the Lord. We are being told to step away from church doctrine. We aren't supposed to go to church or read um books by some of the uh by the uh church leaders of today who are some of the church leaders of the day stacy kenneth copeland and td jakes and um joyce myers and you know so all of those books we are getting away from for at least these seven days as we celebrate the feast of unleavened bread uh, verse 7 says, Unleavened bread shall be eaten for seven days, and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee, neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. It's talking about getting the church doctrine out of our house and using the unleavened bread. Now, I first understood this way back about 20 some years ago when I read through this book the first time and you, you put it in mind when it's talking about unleavened bread um, we're not really used to that especially over here in the United States of America we're used to white bread we're used to light bread even when we go down to the store and get wheat bread it is usually just white bread and it has a lot of leaven in it and if you ever get a, get your hands or get your teeth wrapped around a loaf of unleavened bread the first thing you notice is that it's very dense it's it's it's, it's kind of thick and chewy well you know that should put you in mind of the word of god leavening is when you add something in, into it to make it fluffy and if you don't do so you're going to have a very dense loaf that very dense loaf that he's talking about is the scripture the word of god the book of exodus um the leavening that he's talking about is when you start to add man's words in there to make it fluffy to build it up and make it lighter you know kind of like what the, the preacher does when he takes a verse and kind of like expounds on it and kind of like what i'm doing now where i'm taking the unleavened verse right there in verse seven and i'm talking about it and i'm kind of adding to it and i'm get fluffing it up for you and making it a little bit more palatable meaning and making it where you can understand it that's leavening and for one week we're asked to step away from that i don't even listen to my own channel during that week believe it or not i shut herman's academy down you know um especially listening to it i may you know make a video um but i usually won't produce it 
I usually, you know, won't edit it or anything. I'll let it just sit there until the feast is over, and then I'll come back and actually publish that video. I don't even listen to myself during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. My kids, we don't talk about, you know, um, scripture or anything. Basically, it's all about the scripture itself, and that's what we that's what we do. We concentrate on the the. The word of God itself, and we stay away from man's words that's been added to it. And that's what the Feast of Unleavened Bread is about, getting back into the word of God. Um, I always think that it's a good time to read books like Proverbs, or maybe you read the whole Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible. Or maybe you read the whole New Testament or listen to the whole New Testament or even the Third Testament of the Bible. Don't forget that one. The third testament of the Bible is out too, and you can spend this whole week going through and listening to the third testament of the Bible or reading it. But the thing about it, whatever it is that you read, even if it's the apocryphal books or the Dead Sea, Dead sea Scrolls or whatever it is that you will, you will read, the, the point is, is that you're concentrating on that unleavened loaf, that word of God, that dense, that thick word of God and not allowing man to come in and fluff it up for you. Let's look at verse 8. He says, And thou shalt show thy sons in that day, saying, This is done because of that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. Now, this has several meanings here. Of course, it happened to us way back there when we left Egypt back in about 1400 or 1500 BC or something like that. But if you think about the word Egypt and how it applies to now times, it's talking about when he brought you out into the wilderness, when he separated you from the Egyptian culture, which is all about money, all about materialism. And when he brought you into the wilderness and start teaching you his law, that was one of the first things he did for you. If you can remember he did for you is he put the unleavened loaf in your hand meaning he put the Bible in your hand and so what he's talking about here is how every year you know generation after generation you start telling your sons and teaching your sons that this is what happened when the father separated us from the world is he put the scripture in our hands and it was through that scripture that we started to learn the truth and it was you know getting away from man's doctrines and man's teaching where we're actually able to learn the truth using the word of God itself. All right, so let's get down here into verse 9. It says, And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thine hand, and for a memorial between thine eyes, that the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. For with a strong hand has the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. This is the sign that he's talking about, unleavened bread. And so instead of putting some weird looking box thing on our forehead or some strap on our hand or whatever that business is, we are supposed to be keeping the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That is the sign. When we step away from all the church doctrine and start to concentrate on the word of God, that is what we do. And down there in verse 10, it says, Thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance in its season from year to year. We do this forever. Every year we have a week where we step away from Hermes Academy, where we step away from all uh, leavening whatsoever and just concentrate on the scripture itself for one solid week. We step away from it and... Um, I hope that you guys will come back to Hermes Academy, um, but you know that's that's what it typically does for individuals is you 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 when you get down to the nitty gritty of what the scripture is saying and you start to recognize what truth is, then when you go back down there to the Reverend Pastor Deacon Doctor Doug and start hearing things that don't line up, you know that's why I suggest you read the book of of the Torah, you read the first five books of the Bible. So when he starts talking about stuff that doesn't line up, you know, you can recognize it. You can be like, ah, uh -uh, that ain't what the scripture says. And you can start to, you know, recognize who's telling you the truth and who's not. That's important. I guess that's the most important thing that you'll get out of it is you'll recognize what the truth is, especially if you go through those books like Genesis and Exodus and Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And don't forget about the book of Joshua. 
You'll know what his truth is. You'll know what the message is. And then going forward, you'll be able to recognize the true uh, uh, um, messengers and you'll be able to recognize the false prophets as well. All right, now back over here in Exodus chapter 13, you see right here where it's talking about, in verse 9, it's talking about this sign upon the hand and a memorial between the eyes. Now, between the eyes, you know, I don't know who would argue against it, but that's definitely the forehead. When you think it's between your eyes, it's actually on your forehead. So you have this sign that's on your hand and on your forehead being talked about over here in the book of Exodus chapter 9. Now, sign is uh, synonymous with mark. If I come down here and look at a synonym, even the uh, Microsoft Word uses the word mark as a synonym. So it could have very well have been saying a mark on the hand or the forehead right here in verse in verse 9 but if that didn't convince you that this is the mark of the beast let me show you something I just noticed the father just brought to my attention which I think spells it out the most clear and that's down here when you look at verse uh, 16 of chapter 13 and it, and it says it shall be for a token upon thine hand and frontless between thy eyes for by strength of hand the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. Now this word token, as you can see, it is also synonymous with the word mark. This is a translation. The original Bible was written in Hebrew. And so the word that they used, this is an English word. The original Hebrew word would have meant something like mark. And so again, you see that there's a mark on the hand and between the eyes or on the forehead but let me show you the biggest clue that the father gave us you see this verse 3 and 16 when you come back over to the book of Revelation you see that it is also in 3 and 16 that we start to see that the mark is on the right hand or on the foreheads so that to me is convincing evidence if you realize how the Bible is written in code or whatever that's convincing evidence that we he is trying to tell us that the mark of the beast is opposite to the uh, mark of the father and what is the mark of the father well it came over there at the feast of unleavened bread and you said well how does that make sense Okay, if the feast of the the father, if the mark of the father, if the sign of the father or on the the hand and on between the eyes or the forehead um, is the feast of unleavened bread, then the mark of the beast or the mark of the government, because we understand that the the uh, beast is the government, understanding the book of Daniel, it would be the opposite. It will be not keeping the feast of unleavened bread will be the mark of the beast. Not doing that feast or rejecting the law would be the mark of the beast. Now, we do have still have some more information. We do have still have some other stuff to figure out. How is this going to prevent us from buying or selling when we don't take this mark? Is he somehow is is the beast system going to somehow force people to reject the laws of the Messiah, reject these feast days? Now, they have been causing us to do this so far, you know, due ignorance. It hasn't really been forced. It's been our will that we have put off the feast of unleavened bread and put off the feast of Passover and all of that. But is there coming a day when we're actually going to be forced or, or to to not keep those days? All right. So I just wanted to share this with you guys. Hope you got something out of it. Shalom.